it depends what and where and how. <laughs> uh, the kinds of aquaculture that people are worried about are ones where uh, particularly salmon are grown out in the bays in huge cages. Some aquaculture is on land. You make big, big, you know, vats and whatever and grow them there. And then you can treat the sewage coming out and it goes into the water. But when you've got the animals out in cages in the real, not the ocean usually, usually it's in a bay area, they're in the cages. There's a whole lot of chemicals that get used to prevent the cages from getting coated with barnacles and seaweed and such. Uh, and chemicals, because the fish are more crowded than usual, so there's antibiotics used to try to keep them from getting infectious diseases. There are other kinds of chemicals to prevent them from getting, they get various parasites on the outside. Um, sea lice, they call them, and there's chemicals to prevent that. So there's a whole slew of chemicals that then obviously are spreading. They're put in the cages, but the cages got a mesh like that. And every, so this, these chemicals are in the water. There's also, depending on the currents, if there's not a strong current in the area, all the wastes from the fish are ending up below the cage on the bottom. Um, so those are the kinds of aquaculture that are causing some problems. Food fed to the salmon or fish in the cages, it's generally smaller fish that are fished out of the ocean in order to feed the farmed fish. The fish that they're feeding them, the smaller fish, would otherwise be the food for some natural predators in the ocean. So it's taking food away. If you grow things like oysters or mussels or clams, this seems to be much less of a problem and much really, in some cases, more beneficial. Um, in terms of in areas where there may be too much nutrients and algal blooms, these are filter feeders, and they can eat the algal blooms, and they can um, improve the water quality. Uh, people are doing lots of restoration of shellfish in areas with water quality problems that, you know, it's, it's sort of a double bonus. You're going to grow the, the oysters and be able to eat them, and also they're helping clean up the water. So uh, I'm not saying there's never any problems, but these are much you know, less damaging and in many cases beneficial to the marine environment. These chemicals are not that soluble in the water, but they are particularly, they bind to the sediments. So that though we haven't used these chemicals in decades, they're still there on the bottom, in the sediments, in the mud. And animals can take it up from the sediments and mud. And so we still find for example, DDT levels in sediments in many areas, and we find DDT levels in the fish and the rest of the animals. The levels are much lower than they were in the 1960s, and they have been slowly going down. But it's slowly because we still have we like a repository of these chemicals sitting there on the bottom.